Good afternoon, boys and girls, and welcome to episode 113 of Love at First Scent with me, Percy Lays, here live on YouTube. If you're watching live, thank you very much for tuning in. If you're watching the recording, thank you very much for watching. Watching Either way, please consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already done so. Keith, you get the first comment saying, here we go again. <laughs> Is that is is that is that said with enthusiasm or with a kind of enough already? Please consider subscribing to my channel. Please click on the little bell so that you get notifications of new videos. Please leave comments, ask questions, uh, interact with each other, uh, check out other videos, other reviews on personalace.com, and please do consider supporting my work on Coffee. You will find a link to that in the video description below. Um, and uh, I've got two Louis Vuitton perfumes here. Uh, we're going to smell one of them in this video and then we will take a two minute break and come back and smell the other one. This is the one that we're starting with, uh, brand new from Louis Vuitton. It's called, <clears throat> it's called Meteor. Uh, Q George says, I thought it would be Nuit de Feu. Um, I don't even know that one. Um, this is out as far as I'm aware uh, at the end of August or towards the end of August. Harry says, found you through the Max 40 channel. Thank you very much. Please tell me how to say your name. I, I really, really hate getting people's names wrong. So um, if you could give me some clues to how you say your name. Sorry, but your image is coming across as fuzzy, says Peggy. Um, ooh, not sure what I can say about that because it seems to be okay here on my monitor. So I don't know, maybe, um, maybe funny internet connection somewhere along the line. Uh, Keith says with great enthusiasm. Okay, fair enough. Chang says, re bonjour from Paris. And hello to all of you for uh, writing, you know, those of you who've said hello as well. Druba says, glad I was able to tune in. Testing out Gajra and Gil, what, from, from Sugandko? Oh, wow, you have to tell me what you think of them. Melissa says, good morning from Texas. Nice to see you today. Thank you very much. Very kind of you to write. Path says, it's a little blurred for me too. Oh, I don't know what to do about that because I promise you, I, I'm watching here on, on the old tablet and it seems to be fine. It could be that maybe, oh, now it's normal again, says Path. You're just, you're just winding me up. Just reload the video to clear it up, says Keith. Okay, Keith, you take care of the media side of things. Seems good to me, says Q, George. Thanks very much for pointing it out uh, because I don't always know how things are going out, but, um, and, and don't forget that the, the one benefit that people have of watching the recording is that about 18 to 24 hours after the broadcast, um, YouTube up processes, finishes uploading and processes the HD version. So at least one thing that you get um, if you're not watching live is that you get the highest quality version of the video. Uh, Druba says, we'll be updating you on the original Sukanthko treads to help consolidate it. Good point, thank you. Continue with these new releases, heard middling reviews, okay. Angela says, yellow roses are for friendship and perfect for these broadcasts. I didn't realize that. Well, yes, because we're one big, happy, perfume friendship group, aren't we? Rich Mitch says, did you know Santos and Roadster are discontinued? Two of my favorites. Oh no, I didn't, but let's save the Cartier talk. Okay, right. I don't have a press release for this. You will be relieved to hear, but I have done my homework. I've smelt this already, okay? So this is not This is a bit of a cheat, love at first scent. And I kind of know what I want to say about it because it set me off on a train of thought about some of our favorite um, masculine perfumery materials. A lot of you will know immediately what I'm talking about. But I have watched a video that the perfumer um, make up a press release, please, says Gavin. <laughs> That's not a bad idea. Do you think I should submit it to, to Louis Vuitton? I've watched a video that uh, Jacques Cavalier has done where he uh, explains what his intentions were with the um, with the this, this particular perfume. Can you see that there? Can you see the name? Sorry, I just sort of did that very perfunctorily. There you go. Meteor, or Meteor. Um, I guess it's similar to Sauvage and Bleu de Chanel by the look of the notes. Um, no, actually, I didn't think that. Let's just let's just smell it on the, thank goodness I didn't think that. Um, Druba says, whoops, thought this was California Dream. These are, new yeah, California Dream will do next after this video, okay? Right, Meteor. Let's spray it and then hopefully I will be reminded of what I thought of it when I first smelt it. Oh, it's quite different on, quite different on um, paper. More appealing than it was on my skin, I think, first time round. Okay, but we're getting there. The, this perfume, when I 
smelt it when I wore it uh, just a couple of days ago on skin for the first time made me think, okay, if I'm going to do a video on this, then maybe this will be the video where we again have to go back to the subject of... Nobody said it yet. Woody Ambers. Those, those fantastic <coughs> materials that seem to be in so many um, masculine aimed releases at the moment. Uh, I mean, th th they're everywhere. If you think of um, Hermès Eau de Citron Noir by Christine Nagel, they are the very much the base and the backbone of the next release coming soon from Francis Kirkjian, which I don't think comes out until about the beginning of September. So I may, I may talk about it at the, at the end of this month. Um, so many masculines. I mean, my mind's gone blank now. You, you sort of smell them and you go, OK, here are the woody ambers again. And um, oh, Gavin is saying I went into Selfridges and in these COVID times with London virtually empty, the Louis Vuitton concession was still rammed. Really? That's interesting. So I couldn't possibly. I wonder how the boutique's doing, whether it's reopened. They must be looking to flog a bottle with every bag, says Gavin. Ooh, ooh, you're, you're in a, on a roll today, you lot. Maybe they just have a job lot, says Angela. <laughs> so get the claws out. OK, what have we got here? So the perfumer, Jacques Cavalier, who has done, of course, all of the current Louis Vuitton range, he's their in-house exclusive perfumer says that for this he um, kept going with his idea of journeys because of course all Louis Vuitton work is in some shape or form related to journeys and he went for three citrus essences at the top uh, so I mean what, what was it it was, it was bergamot mandarin orange he decided to go for a spicy heart including um, cardamom and nutmeg and in the base uh, he wanted to put in uh, vetiver, he said. And he does make the point, which again, as I've said in lots of other videos for other brands, if if brands actually make a particular claim in their press material, then you can be sure that the claim is true on some level. So what he said is that the versions of these oils that are in this perfume are ones that have been especially um, fractionated, you know, using fractional distillation for Louis Vuitton. And very, very quickly, what that means for those who aren't aware, uh, a, a perfumer can say to a to an essential oil manufacturing house, say, you know, I really, really like this, I don't know, I really like this lavender oil that you do, but there's one particular aspect of it that really, really bugs me that I don't like because I don't think it's going to work very well in the, in the perfume that I'm making. So could you possibly take it back and break it up almost into its different fractions, into its fractional components, and then remove that one and remove that one and then squish it back together again and give it back to me. Um, so it's almost like a sort of custom made um, oil. And and uh, I remember Jean-Claude Elena talking about it. And I think it was actually Lavender that he was talking about, that he didn't like the fact that uh, th th there was there was a kind of urinous note in a certain Lavender oil that he was using. I hope, I hope it was Lavender. And so he went to um, uh, the, the manufacturers and said, look, I'm working on a lavender perfume, but I really, really would like to get rid of this one particular aspect of it. Can you do it? And and they did. And so the fact that Jacques Cavalier is saying that this contains fractionated oils that have been made specifically for Louis Vuitton must be true. But as we've said in other videos, how much of those oils is in the perfume is, is something that we will probably never know. It could be a drop. It could be several drops. Um, now, what are we getting here? We're getting, or I'm getting, ah, Eric says, Brand de Réglisse for Hermès. Thank you very much. I'm pretty sure it was that one. Um, it's, 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 it's not adventurous for sure. But you know this idea of, of the meteor, there is something mineralic about it. I think, I think certainly on the blotter, and sorry, Louis Vuitton, but if someone were to walk past me wearing this, I would think that they are wearing something fairly safe, fairly mainstream, fairly generic, um, not really striking out any interesting ground, except that there is something, there is, there is, you're bored aren't you, says Gavin, what with this? I hope you're not bored though. Um, there, there is just something, the, the, the interesting thing that I'm getting from it, I suppose, on the blotter is a kind of cool mineralic sweep of the cardamom. Which, which, which nicely ties in with this idea of the, of the, of the meteor, you know, the comet's tail. Um, 
But other than that, th there's a really, really strong kind of soapy, musky thing happening in the base as well, which I think is the thing that is making it, to me, smell so generic. Um, the citruses are in place. It's like everything is in place. And I think I think um, I found this with a lot of the uh, Vuitton masculines that, 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 that they're not especially bold or brave. There are a few of the uh, Vuitton feminines that I think work very well. And I'm not sure I've ever done a, a full video on them. So and, and vetiver in the in the base, you know, not a smoky, swampy vetiver. Let's look at some comments. As I say, no press material for this one, so this is going to be a shorter video. Um, what do you think are the best examples of smelling fractionated oils, says Gavin? I would say Jersey for the lavender compared to, say, Caron Om. Oh, I can't think of any off the top of my head. I'm not a fan of Jersey, though. That lavender they're in there is, is just too sweet and caramelized. But, but yes, you can definitely compare it with the Caron. Uh, Cole says, I thought for sure it would be Calone, but Woody Ambers would be my second guess. Oh, okay. Yeah, not Calone in this case, thank goodness. Um, Angela says, I'm hoping to catch all of this one, and certainly not bored, but forgive me if I have to go. Angela, you don't have to ask to be forgiven. You go and do what you need to do. Your shirt may be more interesting than this fragrance, says Drupa. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, it's, it's just that... I keep I keep thinking Dracar Noir, so I so I don't know whether that means that there's also quite a lot of dihydromersonol in here. And I really don't mind it in Dracar Noir. Great shirt, to be fair. I guess TBF says Rich, thank you very much. Um, I don't mind it in Dracar Noir, and I think Dracar Noir is still great because you know it because it is Dracar Noir. But I don't think I want to be smelling Dracar Noir in anything other than Dracar Noir, if that makes any sense. Um, Thank you very much for the nice comments about the shirt. I appreciate it. Should we all just talk about the shirt because this perfume is really not doing it for us? So yes, I think that I think we'll find out. You know, I will I will wear it on skin again. I will see what happens with the blotter. I think this will probably go go into the category of um, you know it 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 it, it certainly you know it's not nasty. It's not one of the ones that gets the Persilay's forehead um, going straight away. But I think for something that comes from Vuitton, for something that is, you know, really quite expensive, I just hope that they would do something just a tiny little bit more adventurous. But maybe what they've decided is is that the perfume side of things is the stuff that needs to make them a bit more money. I don't know. I don't know. Um, Gita says, hi from San Francisco. So glad to catch you live and very excited to hear your thoughts on California Dream. Well, you need to stay tuned, Gita, because we're going to finish this video in a minute and then we will come back literally in two or three minutes time to do California Dream. Uh, Rich says, Vuitton doesn't make great perfume, in my opinion. You're blushing and turning pink like your shirt, says Ashpal. <laughs> I've never been impressed by Vuitton perfume, says Rich Mitch. Fair enough. Uh, and Druba says, I found out, sorry, I found it out, they haven't slowed down and really thought out their fragrance as being one of the main names in the LV LVMH group. It's an add-on to a bag purchase for them, says Gavin. You may well be right, you may well be right. Orage is my favorite by Louis Vuitton, says Q George. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think whether that was one that I liked as well. I need to, I need to consult my, my notes. So this, this is, we need to round up. This is fine. The citrus notes certainly feel as though they're of a higher quality than you would normally expect. The spice notes feel as though they're of a higher quality. The, the base is, it, and it is all fresh. I should have said as well that Jacques Cavalier said that this is part of his endless quest for endless freshness. So this isn't actually playing things heavy. So it's almost like you could think of it, I suppose it's one kind of redeeming feature, no, more than one redeeming feature, but it's point of interest is the fact that it's presenting heavier materials in a more translucent, lighter way. Um, but you just want it to be, you just want it to be a little bit more surprising, I guess. You just want it to be a little bit more intriguing. But maybe the Louis Vuitton man isn't gonna be especially surprising or intriguing. I don't know. We need to find out how this does on the blotter. Okay, I will say goodbye to you now. YouTube will do its thing, which usually takes uh, about two or three minutes, and then we will come back with California Dream. See you in a bit. Bye.